Hi there. In this question, we're told that in basketball, players often have to take free throws. When Michael takes his first free throw in any game, the probability that he is successful is 0 0.7. For all subsequent free throws in the game, the probability that he is successful is 0 0.8 if he has been successful on the previous throw, and 0 0.6 if he has been unsuccessful on the previous throw. Okay, so find the probability that Michael is successful with all three of his first three free throws in the game. Okay, so the probability of a success on the first free throw is 0 0.7, and he would have to be successful on the second one, and that would be 0 0.8, because it's 0 0.8 if he was successful on the one before, and then it would be 0 0.8 again. So let's multiply those out and we get 56 over 125, or if you prefer it as a decimal, we get 0 0.448. Uh, question B is find the probability that Michael is unsuccessful with his first two free throws and successful with his third. Okay, so to be unsuccessful on his first free throw would be 1 minus 0 0.7, so that would be 0 0.3. Okay, now if he's unsuccessful on his first throw, then there's a probability of 0 0.6 that he'll be successful on the second, so it must be 0 0.4 that he's unsuccessful on the second. And then, if he's unsuccessful on the second, the probability that he is successful on the third would be 0 0.6. So this is u, u, Yes, and we'll just multiply all those three out again, and we get 9 over 125, which as a decimal is 0 0.072. And so let's just remind ourselves that on the first throw, the probabilities are success is 0 0.7, so unsuccess, which is a U, probably have been unsuccessful, is 0 0.3. But then for all subsequent throws, it, it depends. If he's been successful on a previous throw, it's 0 0.8. So this is the probability of S. Whereas the probability of S is 0 0.6 if unsuccessful on previous. So that's the most important piece of information here and we'll need that for the rest of this question. So let's just remind yourself of that fact. We need to now list all the ways that Michael could be successful with his third free throw in a game and hence find the probability that Michael is successful with his third free throw. I'm going to do this using a tree diagram. So in his first one he's either successful or he's unsuccessful and the probability of success is 0.7 and the probability of being unsuccessful is 0 0.3. Now with his second throw, I'm going to branch off. He's either successful or he's unsuccessful. The probability of success is 0 0.8. The probability that he's unsuccessful is 0 0.2. And then I'm going to branch off again. And again we have success is going to be 0 0.8. Unsuccessful will be 0 0.2 will branch off from this one, and if he was unsuccessful with the previous one, now the chances of success is 0 0.6, and the chances of being unsuccessful is 0 0.4. And we do the same down here. We have the probability of success, if he was unsuccessful, is 0 0.6. The probability of being uh, unsuccessful is therefore 0 0.4, and then of being successful will be 0 0.8 because he was successful before. Unsuccessful would be 0 0.2 and successful here would be 0 0.6 and unsuccessful here would be 0 0.4. So now what I need to do is list all of the ways in which he is successful on his third throw and hence find the probability that he is successful on his third free throw. So it's you list the whole branch. So this is one way, and in that red loop I have success, success, success. So if I multiply those three out, I get 
0 0.7, so this is success, 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 by 0 0.8, by 0 0.8, and I calculated that already up at the top of the question, and I got 0 0.448. Now the next one that I'm going to circle, um, I'll do it in green. That's this one here, and again you circle the whole branch. And this one is SUS, and that is 0 0.7 multiplied by 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.6, and if I multiply those out, I get 0 0.084. And the next one I'll do in red again, and that is this one. So it's all the ones with an S at the end is him being successful on his third throw, and there's there's going to be four different ways that can happen. So this one is uh, unsuccessful, then successful, then successful. And if I multiply those three together, I get 0 0.144. And the last one, I'll circle in green again. So. Uh, just as an aside, tree diagrams are very, very useful, and I would advise you to use them where possible. It's a great way of making a question understandable, and sometimes it makes it much easier to work out the answer to. So this time we have 0 0.3 by 0 0.4 by 0 0.6, and that is 0 0.072. We calculated that one earlier as well. So now we just add those four up and we get 0 0.748, uh, which is our answer. So the probability is equal to 0 0.748 is our answer for this section. Now let Pn be the probability that Michael is successful with his nth free throw in the game and hence 1 minus Pn is the probability that Michael is unsuccessful with his nth free throw. Show that Pn plus 1 is 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2 Pn. Now here I'm going to do a tree diagram again, and I'm going to uh, have the probabilities for his nth throw. So the probability of success is Pn whatever that is, and the probability of being unsuccessful is 1 minus Pn. And these would branch off from the previous throw. And then from each of these, there would be two branches. He could either be successful again, or unsuccessful, or he could be successful again, or unsuccessful, depending on the outcome of the nth throw. So, to be successful again, uh, would surely be 0 0.8 because he was successful on his previous throw and to be unsuccessful would be 0 0.2 because he was uh, successful on the previous throw. Whereas if he was unsuccessful on his nth throw now he has a 0 0.6 chance of being successful on the next and a 0 0.4 chance of being unsuccessful on the next. We want to get Pn plus 1 which is the probability that he is successful with his n plus 1th throw so that would be the sum of these two that I'm going to circle here, it would be that one. That's one way he could be successful on his n plus 1 throw, or this way. And because it's one or the other, we add them together. So just to uh, label this one, this is the n plus 1. -th. Okay, so let's just add those two together, and what do we get? So we have Pn times 0 0.8 plus... 1 minus Pn times 0 0.6, uh, which gives us 0 0.8 Pn plus 0 0.6 minus 0 0.6 Pn, so that is 0 0.2 Pn plus 0 0.6. And this, of course, is uh, the probability that he is successful on his n plus 1 th throw. So we have proven what we set out to prove. And again, the tree diagram was instrumental. 
Now assume that P is Michael's success rate in the long run. That is, for large values of n, we have that P n plus 1 is approximately equal to P n, which is approximately equal to P. Using the result from D part 1 above, or otherwise, show that P is equal to 0 0.75. Okay, so what we really want to have here is that the probability of the n plus 1th success namely the success on the n plus 1th throw is the same as the probability on the nth throw. So, and that's going to be called p. We want pn plus 1 to be the same as pn, which is going to be the same as p. So we now have an equation using the uh, statement above, which would be that p, we, we, we change pn plus 1 to p, and that's going to be the same as 0 0.2 times p, because pn is also going to be p, uh, plus 0 0.6. So if we just solve this equation, we should hopefully get that uh, p is 0 0.75. Okay, so then p minus 0 0.2p is equal to 0 0.6, which means that 0 0.8p is equal to 0 0.6. So p is equal to 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.8, which is 6 over 8, which is 0 0.75. So we have established that P is in fact 0 0.75. Uh, for all positive integers n, let a n equal to P minus P n, where P is 0 0.75 as above. Use the ratio a n plus 1 over a n to show that a n is a geometric sequence with common ratio 1 over 5. Okay, so what do we have here? We have that a n is p minus pn, well that means that a n is 0 0.75 minus pn. What's a n plus 1? That's going to be p minus p n plus 1. So that means that a n plus 1 is going to be 0 0.75 minus, and we had a expression for p n plus 1 above, which was 0 0.6 plus 0 0.2 times pn. So let's tidy that up a little bit. 0 0.75 minus 0 0.6 uh, minus 0 0.2 pn, which is 0 0.15 minus 0 0.2 pn. So that's a n plus 1. Now a n plus 1 divided by a n is a ratio, and we can now write that quite easily as 0 0.15 minus 0 0.2 pn all over 0 0.75 minus pn and we should find that there's a common uh, factor here above and below because if I take uh, 5 out, if I divide the bottom by 5, take 5 outside the bracket, I'm left with 0 0.15 minus one-fifth pn, if you like, or 0 0.2 pn. So, in actual fact, the bit inside the bracket cancels with what's on the top, and we're left with a 1, so we just get 1 over 5. So, in actual fact, the ratio is 1 over 5, an plus 1 over an is 1 over 5, so we, we, we've shown that it's a geometric sequence with common ratio. Okay, now from the last question, we were told that P minus PN is the same as AN. And we were also told that it was a geometric sequence. And a geometric sequence has a, a general term TN, which is of the form A times R to the N minus 1. We know that R in this case is the common ratio, so that's 1 fifth or 0 0.2, and we know the first term then is going to be P, which is 0 0.75 minus P1, which is the probability of success on the first throw, which is 0 0.7, so A is 0 0.05. Now, armed with the common ratio and the first term, we can write the general term of the 
series Tn, which is basically An, which is also P minus Pn, as A times R to the N minus 1, which is A is 0 0.05, times R is 0 0.2, to the power of N minus 1, and the inequality says that that's less than 0 0.00001. Okay, so when something is raised to the power of n minus 1, that's the same as 0 0.05 times 0 0.2 to the n divided by 0 0.2, because that's the power of minus 1 bit, is less than 0 0.00001. Now let's multiply on the right by 0 0.2 and divide by 0 0.05, and we're going to be left with 0 0.2 to the n, and we get 1 over 2, 5, Zero, zero, zero. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the, uh, if we write this in log terms, we have something to the power of n is less than that. Um, I'm going to make it equal. See which value of n gives us an equality. So that would be that log to the base, the base is 0 0.2, that's the thing that's raised to the power of 1 over 25000 zero, 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 should give me the power, which in this case is n. So if I punch all that into the calculator, basically the log of 1 over 25,000 to base 0 0.2, and I get that n is equal to 6.29. Now n must be a whole number because it's a sequence, and n is the term in the sequence, and when n is 6.29 we get exactly 0 0.00001. Uh, so I think n is going to have to be bigger than 6.29. I think n is going to have to be 7 uh, to get less than because it's, uh, it's getting smaller each time. P minus Pn is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. How do I know P minus Pn is getting smaller and smaller and smaller? Because the common ratio is 0 0.2, so the common ratio is less than 1, which means that the sequence is shrinking as you go along. You can test, of course, your answer by subbing in um, 7 into your expression 0 0.05 times 0 0.2 to the power 7 over 0 0.2 and seeing do you actually get a number less than 0 0.00001 and I think you'll find that you do whereas you don't if n is 6. So uh, I just need to clarify that n equal to 7 is the smallest value of n such that P minus Pn uh, is less than 0 0.00001. Okay, so that was a, a tricky question, that was. It would have been okay if it wasn't phrased in such a complicated fashion. But uh, hopefully this has helped you somewhat. If you don't understand it, perhaps go through this video maybe uh, a second time and um, and try it yourself as well and see if you can come to the same uh, conclusion. Now you arrive at a game in which Michael is playing. You know that he has already taken many free throws, but you do not know what pattern of success he has had. Based on this knowledge, what is your estimate of the probability that Michael will be successful with his next free throw in the game? Well, earlier on we saw that in the long run, Michael's success was 0 0.75. And we're told here that he has already taken many free throws. So it would be safe to assume that we can use the long-term success rate. So I'm going to use that, 0 0.75. And I'll put in brackets the long-term success rate. And finally, why would it not be appropriate to consider Michael's subsequent free throws in the game as a sequence of Bernoulli trials? Well, the reason is because the probabilities keep changing. They're either 0 0.6 if he was unsuccessful with his previous throw, or 0 0.8 if he was successful. So in that case, the probabilities are not independent for it not to be appropriate to use a Bernoulli trial. So they're not independent, uh, perhaps I should say, of each other. There we go. And that's that. Uh, I think certainly one of the more difficult context and applications questions, but 
a good one to practice and make sure that you understand. Okay, so that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.